what is a test light and should you be using them in automotive diagnostics? Let's take a look. What's up guys, Oscar Gomez here from Master Automotive Training. I'm pretty sure somewhere along the line, somebody told you that if you had a test light like this, cut the end off and use it as an ice pick. But what they didn't tell you is this is a very handy tool, not only to check for the presence of voltage, but also to substitute loads. So let me show you guys how to use a test light that looks something like this, that might look something like this, or something like this. Let's head out to the shop so this way you guys can see how we can use these different types of test lights in different scenarios inside the shop. Let's take a look. Now the first type of test light is your standard incandescent bulb style test light. These you can pick up at Harbor Freight or any auto parts for a couple bucks. And the most important thing whenever you buy something new like this is take the time and run it through an ammeter so this way you know how much amperage it actually draws. And this one draws around 223 milliamps. Why is this important? If I'm going to use this in a circuit, I wanna make sure that the circuit I'm gonna use it in can be able to sustain at least 223 milliamps. If not, I am not gonna use this light because then I can damage the circuit. Now, when you're using this, you can go either to the ground side and then use this on the power side and that's gonna give you a complete circuit and light the bulb. So let me show you guys how to do that. In most cases, back in the old day, a lot of times you were told to only use this to check fuses, right? But you can use this for other things as long as you know that the circuit you're about to connect into has the ability to be able to sustain that load. So let's take a look. So I have my test light connected to the battery ground as you can see right here. And I'm gonna go over here to my fuse box where I have an actual power feed. So notice now that I'm, I'm connected to a power feed, my incandescent bulb lights up. So what this is telling me is that I was able to complete the circuit and I have power at the point where my test light is being connected. Also, I can continue with my test light to see if I have any fuses that have power to power. If I can go across the top of one fuse and then go across the other side of that fuse, and my light, test light turns on, that means that that fuse is in good shape, as you can see here. If I were to go across one, one side of the fuse and I go to the other side and it's off, that's an indication that that fuse is actually blown. All right, so the most common thing I hear guys is, can I only use it on the power side? The answer is no. You can also use this on a ground side. So what I'm gonna do here is because I have my alternator Relatively accessible. So I'm going to go here to the power feed of the alternator output, and then I'm going to go to the engine block ground. And when I do so, notice how my incandescent bulb turns on. So this is also another way of doing it. If you don't have a ground readily available and you want to load test a, a power, you can always go to the power side and then find a ground. So that's way you can actually test the circuit that way, right? This engine block is grounded. This is why, since I'm going to a power feed, when I go to the block, everything on the block is also gonna be illuminating this actual test light. So there's another way that you can do it. You can go from power to ground or ground to power. Just depends how you wanna test it and how easily accessible either one of the two is. Now, it doesn't always have to be a test light that you could purchase at an auto parts store. What I also did is in our diet carts, we have a sealed beam bulb. And what we did is we added stackable ends to the actual connector. Now, if we run the sealed beam bulb on the low side, it draws almost three amps. If we run it on the high side, it's five amps. If we stack them, it's gonna be around eight amps. Why would we want this? If we're doing a fuel pump, before I put the new assembly back in, I load test it. And I'm gonna use this headlight to load test. If I can draw eight amps and get a nice bright light, that means that that circuit can sustain a 10 amp fuel pump with no problem. So this is why this style test light comes into play. Now the beautiful thing about these stackable ends 
is I can use alligator clips or I can use back probes and still be able to make a connection to be able to turn it on. Let me show you. So what I did right here, this is my low side on the positive. I'm going to the fuse box. Now I'm gonna go straight to the ground of the battery. So notice how now my sealed beam bulb is nice and bright. This is a good indicator to me that this circuit can sustain a load of three amps. So this is why using something like a sealed beam bulb is super beneficial for me because I'm gonna be able to see, can it actually sustain a larger load of at least three amps? And my alligator came off, so we'll put that back on. The one thing you wanna be super careful with if you're using something like this is make sure you understand what that circuit can carry before you try using a sealed beam bulb or a load substitution. If you don't, you'll end up frying that circuit and trust me, I'm not gonna be responsible for it. You should have done the homework before you tried using these types of lamps. So again, whenever you're using, uh, whenever you wanna use a test light, it doesn't actually have to be a light. You can always use a bulb or an 1157 bulb as well. Will definitely work to give you the same result. Now, the other test light that we keep in our diag carts are these small LED test lights. One of the first things we always do when we buy them is we take off the end and we add a stackable end. This way I can use an alligator clip, I can use a back probe, I can use anything that I want, a pierce probe, to be able to use this light in any situation that I want. The second thing that we do is we put them on our bench tester to verify how much they draw. This one draws 32 milliamps. So this, draw, this has a very small draw. Now I can use this, for example, I'll show you guys here in a second, on an ignition coil control circuit. Now. What am I testing here? What I'm verifying is, do I have a command from the computer to turn the coil on, right? I don't know if the coil turned on or not, I just know that I'm receiving a command. The reason why I would use this one versus an incandescent bulb is because it's happening at such a fast rate, if I were to use an incandescent bulb, there's a high probability that that bulb might not light up. And it's not because it can't sustain the load, it's more because it doesn't have enough time for it to heat up and emit light versus an LED, I'll be able to see the light light knowing that we have some sort of command, right? So there's a good way for you to verify that. So let me go ahead and set this up so then we can actually test it. Now, the other thing I wanna do before we go into testing it, if you're gonna use an incandescent bulb test light on a computer control circuit, make sure that that computer circuit is designed for high amperage. That's a 223 milliamp draw. Don't add that to a circuit that can only sustain 100 milliamps because then you're gonna end up biting the dust. You'll be end up buying that computer, burning that module up, and you're the one that's gonna be responsible for it, all right? Make sure you guys do that homework. If you're not sure about that, touch back with me. So this way we can go over some Ohm's law because that's the only way you're gonna know exactly if the load you're about to put into that circuit can actually sustain it. So let's go check, let's go take a look here on this car on using this LED test light on the computer control to the ignition coil. Let's take a look. All right guys, so one of the tricks when it comes to coils is this is a four wire coil, so this is a smart coil. That means that the ICM is inside of the actual coil. Look at the coil and then look at the wires, right? Notice how each, it's hard for you guys to see, but each one of these coils has a white and black wire a brown wire and a red wire. Then on the second pin, they have a wire that's a different color. In this case over here, it looks like black. This one's like a blue. This one's like a black with a stripe. And this one's a white with a black stripe. That's gonna be the command one that we wanna look at. So I went ahead and set my back probe all the way in, right? Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my actual test light. All right, so now I'm gonna take my test light and I'm gonna to go to the coil command. And if you notice on that command, I'm getting a flashing light on my LED. So what that's telling me is that I am getting a command from the computer. So in theory, this ignition coil should be firing. This is the reason why we use a smaller LED style test light to test these types of circuits because we're gonna be able to see if we're actually getting the command. 
And that's it guys, using a test light is actually a really simple tool. It's gonna let you know if there's a presence of voltage. Now you can use other methods like an amp probe or an amp meter to then verify if you have current to be able to sustain that particular load. Remember, voltage is gonna be the pressure behind current. Current's the one that's gonna be doing the work. So with that said guys, I strongly recommend you guys carry one of these small LED test lights. Make sure that you do the double stack at the end. Uh, big shout out to uh, Paul Danner. If it wasn't for Paul, I wouldn't have came across these. This is a really handy tool. Shout out to Harbor Freight. Make sure you guys go out to Harbor Freight. Get yourself an incandescent light like this one here. Uh, this one, I'm gonna be modifying it real soon here, cutting this off, putting a double stack in. Uh, and then make sure that whenever you guys get your tools, run them on a bench tester so this way you guys know how much current each one of these is actually gonna draw. And lastly, shout out to Cody Gotti on the tool build. This is how I got the idea for doing this. Uh, so again, this is just a standard sealed beam bowl that we got at Auto Parts with the actual connector. And then I added the stackable ends at the end. And of course we do the math. So this way we know how much it's gonna be drawing. If you guys made it this far, I really appreciate that. Go ahead and give us a like and a follow. Share this video so we can let other people know as well the power of using basic tools like a test light and how we can use it in some circuit situations. And if you have any suggestions for any future videos, drop them in the comments. So this way I can continue to better the automotive industry one technician at a time. This starts with you guys. I really appreciate you guys hanging around with me today. Thank you so much. See you guys on the next one. Oh, 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 oh,